I am not Bill Cosby. My name is Charles Sanford and I am the author of the book Project 2019 Social and Economic Equality Through Formal Education. The following keynote address was presented at the 2008 Project 2019 Annual Conference. Everybody up to date for the past few months I have been working very hard to complete an updated version of my book, Project 2019, Social Economic Equality Through Formal Education. Uh, I'm also considering changing the name of the book from Project 2019, uh, Black America's Journey from Ignorance to Enlightenment. Feel free to let me know what you think about that title change. In any case, the book was first published in 1999, and it's been a few years since I read it from beginning to end. As I updated it, and I say this with all due modesty, I came to the conclusion that it is a good book. It's interesting and informative, and I was impressed by the arguments that I made and how I went about validating them. Indeed, it occurred to me that based on the thousands of books that I have sold, sold at a discount, given away, a lot more people should be involved in making sure that Project 2019 is a success. But then I remember why I wrote the book, because way too many black folks just don't read. Believe it or not, I have offered a dozen kids as much as $25 to read the book and prove that they read it by doing a book report and or sitting down with me and discussing the book. So far, I've only had a couple of offers. And I will not embarrass anyone here this evening by asking for a show of hands of who have read the book from cover to cover. However, I did an informal survey and discovered that some of my relatives, some of my friends, and some of the biggest supporters of Friday 2019 have not read the entire book. You might think because that it's because it's not an interesting book, that's dull or boring, but that is not the feedback that I have received from those who have read it. There are dozens of comments that are posted on the Project 2019 website from people I've never met who have said very positive things about the book. In fact, just a week ago, I received uh, a comment, which I posted, uh, from Dr. Rodney Johnson, the principal of a high school in Houston, Texas. He said he bought a copy of the book four years ago, and since then he has been promoting the message of Project 2019, and he promised to continue to do so. For those of you who have been to previous banquets, you know that sometimes I ask you to do something to support Project 2019 in the coming year. Well, your assignment for the next 12 months is to read the book Project 2019. Now, before you start complaining about homework, you have a whole year, it's only one book, it's not that long, print's really big, and although there are no pictures, there are lots of charts and graphs. So at the banquet, banquet next year when I ask who has read my book, I expect everyone here to raise your hand. The revised edition of my book will be available, available in a month, and if you are serious about your assignment, I will not chase you down, you'll contact me. If you bought a copy of the original book, I will even sell you a copy of the revised edition at half price. In the meantime, to whet your appetites, I have printed off and distributed to you one updated chapter of the revised book. It is issue 12 entitled, Black America Must Accept That It Needs to Be Saved. I suspect that most of you had a chance to take a look at it. You should keep this document handy. It would help to explain why eight Chicagoans were killed and 30 were wounded in shootings last weekend just because it was the first warm weekend of the year. And it will help to explain why five more young black Chicago ones were murdered just three days ago. And the next time you hear about another Chicago public school student being shot, looking at this document may help you to understand why another Stop the March, Stop the Violence March is not going to prevent the next child from being shot. For the record, there are 300 million people in America and as many as 300 million guns. Therefore, even if they stop making guns today, which I assure you they are not going to do, we already have enough guns in America to keep killing our children for the next couple of hundred years. And if you think that your family is safe, you and your family are safe, because you are not caught up in all that mess that's happening in the street, just remember the name Maggie Browder. She's a 70 year old grandmother who went to answer her doorbell one morning about a month ago and was shot to death. Of course, if you're lucky enough to find a good man or a good woman, get married, work hard, and move to a nice quiet suburb, you may avoid some of the dangers, 
but you will need some of that. Look, if you come back to the old neighborhood to go to church, to shop, or to visit your relatives and friends who still live in the city. And speaking of finding a good black man, good luck with that little short. <laughs> at, this, at this exact moment, one out of every 99 men in America is in prison or in jail. And for as bad as that may be, at this exact moment, one out of every 15 black men in America is in prison or jail. Now, what could be worse? Well, at this exact moment, one out of every nine black men between the ages of 20 to 34 are currently in jail. And then there is Alton Logan. He's a black man who was released last week after spending 26 years in prison for a murder he did not commit. Now, we can be mad at that lawyer who knew that he was innocent but said nothing because of attorney-client privilege. But let's not lose sight of the fact that it was a black man who not only killed one innocent black man, but also caused another innocent black man to spend half of his life behind bars. And let me assure you that none of this cruelty, this pain, this suffering, this stupidity, and this craziness is ever going to stop, not until black America's social and economic condition changes. And just marching is not going to change black America's social and economic condition. Just getting a handful of the millions of guns off of our streets is not going to change black America's social and economic condition. Symbolically burying the N-word is not going to change black America's social and economic condition. And I don't want to cross any lines, I don't want to cross any lines, but just praying is not going to change black America's social and economic condition. There is only one way to change black America's social and economic condition, and that is as a result of education and knowledge. Now, let me pause here for a moment. Uh, I have a quick announcement to make. Uh, I want to inform you all that I am not Bill Cosby. <laughs> I presume that everyone here this evening knows that I am not the illustrious Dr. William H. Crosby, but for the record, I am not Bill Cosby. The reason for this disclaimer is that over the past couple of years, a number of people have said things like, you sound like Bill Cosby, or that's the same thing that Bill Cosby is saying, or you and Bill Cosby are really hard on black folks. Some or all of this may be true, but there are fundamental differences between Bill Cosby's message and the message of Project 2019, which, I'll, which I will address in a moment. But with all due respect to Mr. Cosby, he is saying the same things that my mother has been saying to her family and anyone else who would listen for the past 60-some years. And if you think that Bill Cosby is hard on black folks, then you don't know my mother, Lucinda Acker. <laughs> Again, with all due respect, the main reason why Bill Cosby's message is newsworthy is because he is Bill Cosby. The fact is, all of you here this evening have heard Bill Cosby's message from your parents or grandparents or have delivered Bill Cosby's message to your children or grandchildren. Once again, I say this with all due respect to Dr. Cros Crosby. It's not my intention to play down his message or the relevance of him delivering it, nor would I ever presume to speak for him, and you can tell me if I am wrong, but this is what I think I have heard him say. Black folks stop being stupid. Or maybe it's black folks act like you got some sense. I think stop being stupid is what my mother, how she puts it. I also hear Bill Cosby saying that black folks need to stay in school, stay out of games, stay off of drugs, work hard, take care of your family, and make something out of your life. I hear Bill Cosby saying that black Americans can do better, and that black Americans should do better. But again, this is a message of every black leader in America, as well as the mission of every black organization in America. But as I said a couple minutes ago, there are fundamental differences between what Bill Cosby is saying and the message of Project 2019. And I'll point out those differences that briefly answer the question, what is Project 2019? This concludes part one of three of the keynote address by Charles Sanford at the 2008 Project 2019 Annual Conference.